Hi, we are going to have a quick look at the lower bound of European call options on non-dividend paying stocks. Now, remember for a call option, a call option is only valuable when your underlying price, in this case the stock price, moves beyond the strike price. And, and especially since we are looking at European call options, so at maturity, if the stock price has moved beyond the strike then the call option is valuable and you will exercise your call option if not the call option is not valuable and you will not exercise your call option so that's what we are showing here in the table in the so so these all these events are happening at maturity remember we are talking about european call options so at maturity if your stock price is five dollars or six dollars you're not going to exercise your call option because they are less than the strike in the first case in the second case it's equal to the strike price so you will leave it as it is and therefore your payoffs are zero now in these two cases since your stock price has moved beyond the strike price you're going to exercise your call option and therefore you will have a payoff of one dollar in this case and in this case a payoff of two dollars so the lower bound of a call option in other words what's the lowest value a call option can take can be proved that of course now if the at maturity if the price of the underlying is less than the strike then of course the lower bound is zero now if not we can prove the lower bound of a call option is the spot price of the underlying minus the strike price discounted at the risk free interest rate so this is this will be the lower bound of a call option so we can prove this with a formal argument so let's say we have two portfolios portfolio a and portfolio b now in portfolio a we have an european call option so remember for an european call option the payoff at time t let's assume time t is the maturity let's t can be for example let's say six months from now so at time t the payoff of this european call option will be the either zero or the difference between the underlying and the strike so if, if the underlying moves beyond the strike at maturity then that will be the payoff or else it will be zero and then let's assume the portfolio a also has a zero coupon bond with a with the notional of k in other words remember for a zero coupon bond you purchase it at a discount and at maturity you will receive the notional back so in this case at at time t the payoff from a zero coupon bond will be that you will receive k which is the strike price then you have a portfolio B, which is you are just holding one share of this same stock, and therefore at time t that share will grow to ST. In other words, if for example, if you have a stock which is worth fifty dollars today, in six months' time it will grow at the risk-free rate. So that's what we are saying. That's ST. So these are two portfolios. Now let's assume at maturity so in this case let's assume that maturity is in six months time now in six months time if your stock price has moved beyond your strike what will happen so if your stock price at maturity is more than your strike then of course your option is valuable so in other words the payoff of your call option would be st minus k so st being the price of the stock at in six months time so your payoff from your european call option would be st minus k and your zero coupon bond at maturity will get, will get you k so let's assume that's that will give you k which is the strike price now one thing also to note that both of these products your european call option and zero coupon bond they both have the same maturity so that's how we have set up the portfolio so they both are maturing 
in time t. So this will be your payoffs. Now portfolio B, your stock would have grown to ST. So in this case, at maturity, if your stock price is more than your strike price, the value of your portfolio A would be, if you add these two, K will cancel off. So the value of your portfolio A would be ST and the value of your portfolio B would be ST at maturity. So that's what we are saying here. If the underlying is greater than the strike price at maturity, then the value of your portfolio A will be equal to the value of your portfolio B. Now, if the opposite happens, in other words, if at maturity, if your stock price is less than your strike, if your stock price is less than your strike, then you will not exercise the call option because it's not valuable. So you will not exercise it. So that payoff of this one is zero. Now your zero coupon bond, of course, it will give you a payoff of K. So that will at time T when it's matures. So that will be a payoff from the zero coupon bond. And then your share will grow to ST. In other words, it will increase by the exponent of the risk-free interest rate. So the total value of your portfolio A at maturity would be K and the total value of your portfolio B at maturity would be ST. But here we know that the stock price is less than the strike. That's the, that's the scenario we are looking at. That means your value of your portfolio B because that's the stock price at maturity value of your portfolio B is less than portfolio A. So portfolio A is more valuable because K is more valuable than the stock price. So that's what, that's what we are saying here. Port value of your portfolio A is greater than value of your portfolio B. So we have looked at two scenarios. The first scenario is when your stock price at maturity is greater than the strike and the second scenario is your stock price at maturity is less than the strike. So if we summarize these two findings what we are saying is of course if my stock price is greater than the strike then the value of both portfolios are the same portfolio A and portfolio B but if my stock price is less than the strike at maturity then portfolio A is more valuable than portfolio B. So if we add these two together, in, in other words, no matter what happens to the price of the underlying at maturity, whether it's greater or less than K, the portfolio A would be greater than equal to the value of your portfolio B. In other words, what we are saying is, Portfolio A will at least be equal to the value of portfolio B or more at maturity because we know that if the value of your stock stock price at maturity, if your stock price moves beyond strike, then both portfolios are equal. But if your stock price is less than the strike at maturity, then portfolio A is more valuable than portfolio B. That, that means what we are saying is, no matter what happens at maturity, portfolio A is at least as valuable as portfolio B or more. So that's what we are saying here. The value of your portfolio A is greater than or equal to value of portfolio B at maturity. So remember portfolio A has the call option and a zero coupon bond and portfolio B has just one stock. Now if we say the price of the call option as C, if you denote the price of the call option as C, what we are saying is, so remember portfolio A has a call option and a bond. So if we say today's price of the call option is C, so C plus, remember the bond gives us a payoff of K at maturity. So the present value would be K discounted at the risk-free interest rate. So that's what we are showing here. So that's portfolio A's present value. 
C plus the strike discounted at the risk free interest rate would be greater than equal to the spot price of the stock which is S0. Now if we rearrange, remember this is the present value or the current price of the call option. The call option is greater than equal to S0 which is the spot price of the stock minus the strike price discounted at the risk free interest rate. So what we are saying is the lowest value of the call option is either zero of course we know that at maturity for a European call option of a non-dividend paying stock at maturity remember at maturity if your stock price is less than your strike then of course the payoff is zero so that's what we are saying here the lower bound of your call option is either zero or the difference between the spot price of your underlying minus the strike discounted at the risk free interest rate the max of these two so that's the lower bound of your call option of a european call option on a non-dividend paying stock so remember if you are doing the frm exam it's useful to remember this so the lower bound of an european call option on a non-dividend paying stock is simply the spot price of the underlying minus the strike discounted at the risk free interest rate. Now we can also prove the lower bound of an American call option on a non dividend paying stock would be the same. I will discuss that in another video. So go through this video again if you need to understand the basics. And if you have any questions, you can post it in the comment section. And if it, the video was useful, you can like and subscribe to our channel. And I'll post more similar videos on the same topics. Thank you.